short tongue Cause you don't wanna piss off anyone We're traumatized by the damage done Welcome to America How's it going everybody? Johnny Styles here with the Wellness Observer Live, powered by BadDudeCO.com. Visit BadDudeCO for all your supplement needs and cool apparel. Use code WOL15 to save 50% off and of course support the best channel in the whole world of wellness right here with none other then the godfather of one legend johnny styles thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for subscribing for the youtube channel you can also check out the shows on itunes if you want if you want to just listen to them also if you are on spotify you can check the, either the shows you can watch them or listen to them and you can do your cardio and you can just watch and enjoy the shows we are all platforms ahead including the world of Instagram. This show was supposed to be up on Wednesday because, you know, it's Wednesday and you know what that means, but it's up now Thursday because in reality, you know, something happened. A post went up on Monday and kind of threw off a whole curveball into the wellness world, if you want to call it that. But um, first off, I want to say that um, we have a lot of news to get into. And trust me, this might be the biggest show yet. And trust me again when I'll tell you that I'll answer many, many, many things in this video. But if you're new to the channel, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. But you can also, again, watch on IG. You can watch it on Spotify and iTunes. In an industry where people claim to be real and they all want to be real this my friends from monday tuesday wednesday and today thursday was all a shoot and this channel specifically is for all things wellness including yourself the competitors girls that don't compete they just want to look good they follow the industry the npc and the ifbb pro league so without further ado Instead of going to the drama of the situation, you might want to wait a little bit longer for that because I am going to cover the competitors from this past weekend on the IFBB Pro Stage on the Legion's Sports Fest, which promoter Chris Mimes did a magnificent job on that show. Great live stream. It was a whole weekend of events, and the wellness girls, the pros, were up there, and I got a chance to do a watch party with you guys live on Instagram where we talked about the girls as they came, you know, one by one and we critiqued them. Also, I did a video prejudging preview. My, I, I did a preview, which I kind of nailed, if you know what I mean. And then I did a, a prejudging preview, I guess, prejudging wrap up, which is what it's called. And I kind of nailed it there again. So if you want to watch that, it's right here on YouTube. If not, you can just watch a little bit of, of what I'm going to say. I am not going to talk about the entire lineup. I'm probably going to talk about the top eight. And I'm going to give my star rating review. If you're new to the channel and you don't know what the star ratings is, you can go on Instagram. You can check out those three pinned posts, especially the one in the middle, where it's basically a star rating system that I created for my wrap-ups, my reviews on girls that go on there on stage, it could be the NPC Nationals, it could be the Olympia, it could be the Arnold. And depending on each show, I'll give a star review depending on how this person looks. Granted, from five stars to one star, or some people call it minus five, five stars or whatever. I haven't done that yet, but <laughs> in reality, um, you guys catch my drift. Also, just because a competitor places first in one show and I gave it four stars doesn't mean that she could win a show in another show and I gave her three stars. These are all individual shows and these are all individual posing routines and the entire, you know, spiel of the person on a show. So just because you placed 
second and I gave you probably, I don't know, in my opinion, two stars, doesn't mean that in the next show you want to place two stars unless I believe you look the same. So without further ado, let's go in right into the show. Again, as I mentioned, Chris did a magnificent job as a promoter of the show. I liked the superhero gimmick. I saw Bojana Vasiljevic, his tag team partner, and um, she was dressed very cool, like Captain America type of. And, you know, I want to say this. Bojana right now is probably one of the few figure superstars that can easily cross over into wellness. I know she likes it. And, you know, her, her bag is crazy. Her cap delts are crazy because she's been in figure for so long. But I've, I've seen some pictures of her, and you never know. If, if Boyana sets her mind to it, you'll never know if she'll pop in this show. And, hey, who knows? She, may, she might even do the show after all. Started off the start rating review. I got to start off with probably the disappointment of the show. Many people's favorite, you know, even myself, I liked this person a lot <laughs> moving into the show. If you saw my preview show, you saw that I had Amanda winning, you know, Amanda and Judy. And then, you know, I said there was somebody in that list that, you know, we haven't seen because it's her pro debut. And it's none other than Lori Slayer. Lori Slayer was the missing link in that preview because we didn't haven't seen her in a pro show. Lori Slayer, I got to give her two and a half stars. It was a letdown for sure to see Lori up here in this shape, um, meaning in, in, in terms of conditioning. Lori has a magnificent shape for wellness, 100,000%. The thing with Lori is that her conditioning was way off. If you see her lower body is great, you know, super tiny midsection, gray cap delts. And, you know, look at her back. You know, the size is there. She probably has one of the best calves in the whole game. But her lower body is just not there. Her lower body is not there at all. And this was very disappointing to see right here, especially, you know, in this area. You see there's no lines going in whatsoever. Gray calves and just barely, barely some lines in here. And it was sad to see that, you know, a lot of people expected a lot of good things from this showing, and it didn't happen. But... That's maybe why you should do more shows ahead of time to see where you're standing. You know, if you're uh, uh, doing your pro debut and you win, that's a home run. And imagine pro debut goes to the Olympia. Holy moly. You know, that type of situation. But maybe, maybe she should have done a little bit more shows prior. Maybe she got nervous. Something happened backstage. But Lori Slayer, she has absolutely crazy physique. She just got to get conditioning and that's it. No more, no less. You're seeing the star ratings right here, and you see that it says read below right here because these are posts that I had scheduled for, you know, the Instagram page where I do your star ratings review. All these pictures, you can go on, log on right now to npcnewsonline.com. They were all shot by the man himself, J.M. Mannion, which, of course... Of course, I gotta have to talk to you know talk about him a little bit later on in the show. But thank you so much again for Lori to going in for this show. You know, I I knew some people didn't know she was gonna do the show, but she did do the show. She placed eighth. I would advise Lori to go back to the drawing board and just get in conditioning. Next up, we have Priscilla Lind. Priscilla Lind comes in here with a good package. She has done a couple of shows where she's been kind of close. And when she comes out, when Priscilla comes out by herself, she looks amazing. She looks amazing, and she kind of has the whole package. Good look, great stage presentation. And, you know, her glutes are there from the back, crazy side quads. You know, her calves have gotten way better. But I think the problem with Priscilla is when, um, when she's on the lineup, she kind of gets lost a little bit in the mix. And th those are things that happen. You know, you can be a spot on and then probably look smaller-ish next to the other competitors. And, hey, this happens, okay? So, with Priscilla, I'll give her three stars because considering what I saw from her in the past shows, she did get better. It's just a matter of a size game for her. Is it beneficial for her to get bigger? Is it not beneficial? She has to go back again to the drawing board and come back with a 
probably, you know, probably a bigger package if, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not being super hypercritical of her. Next up, Emily Azarello. Emily has a humongous fan base. Again, I give her three stars. Beautiful shape. I told you guys. I told you guys that if people were not in shape, she can squeeze in that first call out. And, oh, boy, did she. She did. She placed sixth place. And I liked her presentation. Very pretty girl. I would like to see more, more quad here, especially from the front. Right here, I would like to see more quad separation in this area. In the side, you know, her calves can get better, and she was a little bit softer-ish from the back. But you can still see the teardrop from her glutes, adductors, and the hamstrings. So three stars for Emily. Next up, we have, let me see, if Emily plays six, we have number five all the way from Spain, Maria Paulette. She is a competitor we haven't seen that much in America because she resides in Spain. She's super popular in Spain, and I got to give it to her. She nailed conditioning, especially from the front. She could have been a little bit harder from the back. Three and a half stars because she did improve from her past show. Her abs were in. Her conditioning from the quads were in. Her glutes were extremely full. I'll touch on that in a second. And her calves did get better. Her calves did get better, and I got to applaud for that. Good tanning. Notice her front pose. You guys know that, you know, if you haven't watched my channel before, you can go back and check. I was a big proponent of the front, of the front you know, front pose. You can change it, you know. She changed the front pose in her presentation. And I believe that even though I like this pose a lot, I believe, I believe it didn't suit her well. Why? It makes her quads look smaller. And she doesn't have, you know, small quads. It's just the way she's standing up and down like this. And you can see the glute fullness in this side. Good abs. Great smile. But it just makes the legs seem smaller. Maybe she needs to go back and change that posing. Her glutes, her glutes are ginormous, full AF. I believe the judges like to have some type of conditioning in the glutes. Can they look full? Yes, but they still have to have a little bit more conditioning. She seems to have a fullness that none of the other competitors have on stage. So she did get better. And, you know, three and a half stars. She plays fifth here. And, you know, she might do another show. And um, we I don't know if we might see her in the Olympia, but did she get better? Absolutely. Next up, placing fourth, one of the favorites, Frida Paulson you know, with a new blue bikini and again what can i say that i haven't said about frida paulson frida paulson has gotten better every single time great presentation beautiful look great hand good cap delts abs to die for now it's the front post a little bit damages her overall structure and shape because it makes her look small this is just a thing that she has to get better just size on this outer quad right here and the lines, she needs the lines on this specific pose. From the back, she's gotten way better, and a lot of girls love her glutes, okay? The glutes are powerful. She does have high calves, but let me tell you, those calves are legit. And this package right here, I remember saying something like, if Frida Paulson gained 10 more pounds of pure muscle in that lower body, everybody and their mom is going to have a, a terrifying thing to think on stage because Frida Paulson is coming and she is amazing. I've critiqued Frida since she was in a bikini division, okay? And one thing I got to say about her, she understands the game. She understands how critiques work, not only from me, but from everybody else and the judges. She understands what to grab, what she can be better. And Believe me, when I talked about Frida Paulson starting the year, I only thought she was going to do two shows. That's it. Look at her now. Two plus shows. And can I say that she gotten better? Absolutely. Even, you know, she has shut me up in a way because just when you think that Frida Paulson is not going to do well, she ends up doing well and getting better. It doesn't matter if her placing is not the best because, remember, she could have placed second, third, and she ended up placing fourth here. Okay? That's the amount of, you know, pro caliber that was on stage with her. 
great showing by Frida Paulson. I absolutely liked her body physique. She just needs a little bit more size, and she knows it. Next up, placing third, Leticia Allen from Honolulu, Hawaii, believe it or not. Leticia Allen is what I like to call the dark horse of the entire class in this show because nobody saw it coming. Not even, I'm going to put me on my cell phone screen, not even the Godfather of Wellness. I didn't even see her coming from a mile away. Leticia Allen has a good look when she is standing right here in pictures. Right here in the front, I would have liked to see her more defined here in that front post. Her abs are crazy, crazy. Cap delts, uh, her upper body is a little bit bigger from my liking, but um, she's a taller girl, it seems. From the back, she has good glutes, sm a little bit smaller on the smaller side. Quads are there, but absolutely has no caps. She needs to work on that. Tiny waist, good presentation, three and a half stars. One thing I like to say, especially about Leticia, when she came out, her posing could get better. And sometimes when you see her in certain shots and poses, it looks like a figure-ish body transitioning into wellness. I don't think she's there yet, but she is definitely was the dark horse, you know, of the missing link of the show because nobody saw her coming. And look at that. She places third here out of the blue. Next up, I called it. I called it, I called it, the one and only Judy Ann Winston from Sunrise, Florida. We last saw her at the Miami Pro Show and in a debatable second place again against Giselle Machado. This is the Judy Ann Winston I like to see on stage. She's always awesome. I would have liked to see Judy Ann Winston, the Miami version. This Judy Ann Winston, if Miami was 100%, this was 92, 93, maybe 94. She wasn't as hard. Although when you see her in the pictures, you, you can tell like she's in shape. That's her overall like shape. Great upper body. She has toned down her upper body, believe it or not. And then from the back, she has calves, great calves. She has amazing, amazing tie-ins from the hamstrings and the glutes and the hams and adductors, small waist, the whole nine yards, okay? Again, as I said before in that Miami show, I wouldn't have any issue her beating Giselle Machado. Absolutely none. Because she was that good. She she got second place. Now, if Judy and Winston would have come in this show like she did in Miami, I believe in my heart she would have won the show. But since she was not that 100%, I believe Amanda won the show because of that. Because in reality, Judy Yang is very powerful. Very, very powerful. One of the most powerful um, athletes in the IFBB Pro League. And, um, and you know, she's African-American. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on about the African-American wellness. Because I have something to say about that as well. Winning the show, as predicted by the godfather of wellness, Johnny Styles, is the one and only Amanda Burnett finally nailing down her Olympia qualification. If you don't know, Amanda Burnett is a brand new IFBB pro, and she's done pretty much like seven shows, I believe. And not only that, she kept coming show after show, and she nailed it, and she's going to the Olympia. How many people can say that? How many people can say, I just turned pro this year, I'm going to the Olympia. I want a pro show, I'm going to the Olympia. Amanda's one of those girls. In this show, absolutely four and a half, four and uh, four and one fourth of a star. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But the good thing about Amanda, great stage presentation, great look, great tan, good smile, good cap delts, tiny waist right here, great poppings glued from the front. Size on these quads were great. If you go from the back, look at the glutes, teardrop, hamstring, and the calves. The calves can get a little bit better. I'll tell her that much. But the thing that I think Amanda has to work on is more posing. She is failing at her side posing, and she is failing in her overall stage presentation. I believe that you know the wellness category is one of those well is one of those classes that you have to have some type of sexiness, some type of flirtiness, some type of sazon, as we like to call it in Spanish. There's a spark into it, and I think Amanda's letting loose now. She is letting loose in stage and, and like get grasping a feel. That's what happened probably to Lori 
when Lori did the show for the first time, her posing wasn't really good. So maybe, maybe that's why, you know, you need to do more shows in order for you to get better. Then you got to go through show after show. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be right now, I believe this is Amanda's seventh show of the freaking year. That is not easy to stay in prep and to do these shows and get progressively better and get call outs that you think you're going to win the show or you didn't win. Wow. Okay. So I applaud Amanda for winning the show and going to the Olympia. It's an experience that only Amanda can just feel right there. I know her and her husband, um, Scott, are really happy and I'm wish her the best. She still has a lot of work to do. Don't get this star rating on your head. That, that doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're amazing. Because at the moment, yes, this is how you looked in this show compared to these girls. This is not how you're going to look next to other girls, especially in the Olympia. Again, I want to thank Chris, the promoter from Legion Sports Fest, for letting me use footage and, you know, come to you guys and explain and talk a little bit about the class. I love that I can talk to promoters and they can give me their feedback on what do I need to do in order to get their live streams better, you know, in terms of the media coverage. How can I bring you guys the news of the Wellness Girls, showing you pictures, of course, from NPC News Online, but also showing you guys videos of the girls in motion, okay? Not the entire thing. That's obviously copyright infringement, but a little bit, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and you guys can see from your own eyes that, you know, that's what I'm talking about, the, the posing, the transitions, the hands, everything. Eventually, you know, when, the, when I get a press pass, I'll get my own camera and I'll bring you the footage for you guys to see, and that will be amazing. But right now, again, I want to thank Chris, the IFB Pro League, for letting me use this videos as well for you all that are watching right now the ones of Observer Live. So now that we got that out of the case, because again, this is for competitors, by competitors, everything, you know, I'm, this channel is supported by you guys. And for that, I thank you. This show was supposed to be on Wednesday. It did not go that way because on Monday night, there is a post on Yarishna Ayala's Instagram. And, you know, at the moment, that's the situation that I want to address. Before I want to address this, you can log on to Bodybuilding and BS with Nick Trigilli, and you can watch his video on this situation if you, have, you haven't been following. And he does a great job explaining a little bit of everything that went down. I should not be coming up here and just rehashing stuff, but I want to come up here and at least so you can hear it from me, a little bit of you know what I had to say in my own post on the Wellness Observer Live. I'm going to go one by one, and whatever comes from my head, I'll shoot it right here because that's what I do. I shoot First off, I said, do you even know where the where JM Manning heard wellness first? You want a video? Let's cue the video in three, two, one. That one of the knocks I hear on wellness. I've ever since I mean when I initially heard about wellness, thank you, Johnny Styles. Thank you, JM. If you don't know, I've known JM Manning since since 2013. First time I met JM was at the New York Pro. By then, the bikini division was really, really different so, since, you know, what you see nowadays on stage. I have a picture of me and JM backstage with some of the bigger bikini girls. And I remember right there and then was my perfect time to talk to him about wellness. I believe strongly that, you know, he kind of heard it and then, you, you know, went from here and then here and he didn't pay attention to it. But he knew, he knew I was telling him about wellness. Every now and then, we met at all the shows in the press pit, and I showed him a video. I showed him a clip. I showed him this. I showed him that. And I keep I kept bugging him and other IFPB pro judges, officials, competitors, friends, family, everybody about the class. I've been talking about wellness since 2009, but I guess, if you want to call it fair, in America, in the actual industry, I got brought into the industry in 2012, 2013. 
And I didn't name myself the godfather of wellness. For those of you who don't know the story, let me replay it again, okay? By the year 2013, 2014, I got invited to cover a show in Mexico City called the Mr. Mexico, basically the Mexican Nationals. That At that time, whoever won that show could get an IFBB Pro card. It's a humongous weekend show. They even have class for kids, like 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 little kids. They have class for fitness, and they go up there and they post. They have a category for lucha libre, so it's all these luchadors posing with their masks. Okay, it's this is real. This is Mexico. Remember, bodybuilding and Mexican wrestling, lucha libre. It's like a religion in Mexico. You don't play around with that. The moment I got dropped off from the airport. They had a driver waiting for me. The driver was the one I wish I, I wish I had his name. I wish, I wish. The driver was the one that said, hey, Johnny, el padrino del wellness, the godfather of wellness. And I never heard that before, so I did. And I shake his hand. He took me out there. The fans that I met in Mexico knew the name, apparently, and they called me that. Many years later, 2014, 2015, I went back to Mexico again. Same thing. 2016, 2017, I went to Colombia for the Olympia Amateur in Colombia. Guess what? In the Olympia Amateur in Colombia, Medellin, Colombia, people were calling me the godfather of wellness in Spanish, but they were calling me the godfather of wellness. That doesn't mean that I created the class. I did not create the class. It was created in, in Brazil. I can get you the name of the people involved, all this and the other. Maybe I should change the name. I'll do a poll of you guys on Instagram. Let me know. Should I change the name to the Godfather Wellness from that to like the catalyst, the catalyst of the wellness division in America? Because at those years, 2013, 2012, 2014, nobody, I can assure you, nobody in the United States of America was promoting wellness like I was. I was promoting Alin Barredo, I was promoting Angela Borges, I was promoting every single girl that was tipping on stage on these stages that people didn't even know. Did you know that the wellness division was featured at the Arnold Classic in Brazil, but it was just not covered? I wonder why. Did you also know that the wellness class was featured in a thong? A real legit thong? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? Yeah? Yeah. And it was on an IFBB Pro stage. And it was in the Arnold Classic. So it was totally a division. Now, I am going to tell you guys one thing. I've always called J.M. Mannion the architect. Well, I'm the godfather. He's the architect. Why are those cool names? Because things happen for this to happen in America right now. I'm going to give you the best analogy. I wish... I wish I had a, a whiteboard here to draw you guys because I think this is the way you guys kind of understand. There's an analogy we came up with, and maybe, maybe one day this will be this will be in dark side of the wellness division or a documentary or something, which I hope. I hope we make a killer documentary on this. Me, JM, because we're really good friends. Um we were talking one night, and for those of you that are familiar with football right? Football, the fo American football, not soccer, American football. Take me, Johnny Styles, as a quarterback, okay? You know what a quarterback is? Okay. I get handed the ball. The ball is the idea of bringing this great class into the United States of America. The ball, which I have to, you know, move and look and talk and go through people and not get hit. So this idea, this class can probably land in the right hands. What does Johnny Styles do for many, many, many years? He grabs that ball. He talks to everybody. He shares it with everybody. He goes on his social media and talks about it. He shows all these great girls with great quads and great hamstrings and great glutes, shows them to the world. I keep that ball with me, looking, looking, left, right. And all of a sudden, I see a wide receiver, right? That's what it's called, a wide receiver open, which is my friend. 
And I know that somehow, some way, if you keep bugging, if you keep bugging, if you keep showing up and showing up, something has to happen. So I look at this white receiver called J.M. Mannion. I, 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 I feel myself like Brett Favre or whatever. And I throw this idea in this class all the way to the left corner. And he wide receives that idea. Now it's up to him to do battle with all those other players in the game. Because you know who's standing in the goal line? Do you know who the goal line is? Do you know when the touchdown is? Who is the touchdown? Mr. Jim Mannion, the IFBB Pro president. So I took this ball as a quarterback. I threw it as hard as I could to JM. JM grabbed that and went all the way to the bank until he touched down. And eventually, Jim Mannion gave the okay. And I remember Jim actually shaking my hand at the Olympia and just giving me the, his, his, his smirk. And even in the Pittsburgh Pro, I knew, I, I knew after many, many years of talking to him about the class, this was something that was here to stay. I know many people ask me about Tyler, Tyler Mannion, which is you know, the head judge also and vice president of the NPC. Tyler Mannion, I believe, was still in his wrestling days in college while I was talking to JM. You know, Tyler wasn't involved still in the league. You know, he wasn't even around back then. I was still there. If you watch Nick Trujillo's video, you can see that he says that, oh, I think Johnny's been in the industry longer than I have. I think so, too. I think so, too. I covered Trujillo when he went from the NPC. I was at the show in the USA's when he won. I was there at the photo shoot when he did with JM. I was there when he did his pro shows. I was there when he did the bros versus pros in Eric's Muscle. You catch a drift here? I'm not some new guy. I'm not. So maybe, maybe if 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 you guys give me the okay or whatever, if you, if you like that, I'll still feed the Godfather of Wellness. But maybe the catalyst. But that sounds that sounds kind of cool. Um, in my other post with the receipts, you forget I was a judge. Yes, I was an IFBB NPC judge. I actually have my NPC card right here, and um, I did I did judge shows in Puerto Rico the NPC part of the show and in, in right after the IFP Pro League. Jarishna was part of this show as well. She was actually competing in the show and I was right there in that judge's table. And she even took a picture with me. So I don't know if she forgot. Maybe she did forget. Maybe she did forget and you know she doesn't remember or she thought it was fake, but it wasn't fake. It wasn't fake. It was all real. And if you saw the uh, picture that I posted, that was me in a suit. In a suit. You will never see Johnny Styles in a suit. <laughs> And I mean, rarely, barely, you'll see. Who said I had a voice or a vote with the judges? I, I, who said that? Who said that? I don't. This is my own channel where I do my own opinions and I, my own descriptions or who I think should win, in my opinion. That's all. I don't have a voice. I don't have a vote with the judges. That's their job, not mine. Who critiques competitors before going on stage? Everybody that you know, is involved in the media, covers the competitors right before going on stage. Are not are we not supposed to do that? Are we not supposed to do prediction shows? Come on. Do not take feedback from me. I've given my feedback to many girls. And if you don't want your girls to take feedback from me, that's fine. They don't need to watch me. They don't need to ask me for anything. But every person that has that have asked me for feedback, I've been honest and I've been Truthful. I'm never going to change. I love this class so much that I would prefer to tell you, you will have to represent this class well or just change category. So every single feedback that I've given girls, you know what happens? They come back and they prove me wrong. Hashtag prove me wrong. So I have not, you know, I don't, if you're, we don't want your girls to have feedback from me, that's fine. I have plenty of other people that would love my feedback. Follow the pages of the league. Absolutely. Who said not to follow the IFPB Pro Wellness League? Who said not to follow the NPC Wellness League uh, their, or their Instagram? Who said that? Listen, if I follow Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, I still follow the NBA. If I follow the New York Mets, I also follow the Major League Baseball. That's the league. 
If we also follow the NFL, I'll follow the league. I'll follow wrestling, WWE, AEW. I never had said that. People choose who they want to follow. You have to follow the league if you're involved, if you want to. Yes, if you want to follow me, yes. If you don't, you don't. Easy as that. You don't compete, you can't critique. Oh, boy, this is a good one. I, I said in that um in that caption, I said, I invite you to go and learn and read about Peter McGuff, what many people consider the one of the greatest journalists in the bodybuilding world. I had a chance to, you know, talk to Peter. Amazing knowledge in everything he had. He was a great human being, always with a smile on his face. And he always made time to talk, not only to competitors, but to fans. That's really important. Peter McGuff did not compete, okay? You know who doesn't compete either? Around 90, 88, 85% of, you know, wor worldwide judges that we have on the IFBB Pro League and the NPC. Not everybody that judges is or was a competitor. There were some people there that actually study the industry of bodybuilding. They actually study the history of bodybuilding and fitness that actually are machines in their heads okay you don't have to be a competitor to be a judge does it help yeah it helps but it, that doesn't mean that you have to if you don't if you're not a competitor you can't critique there's many channels of people that are great at what they do critiquing bodies pulling them apart in the bodybuilding world that don't compete also one thing you know it's it's really weird that i saw this post that you know in our 10 plus year um Friendship, if you want to call it, you don't spell my name right, you know. And my name is at, at Johnny Styles. I, I I don't know why that happened. <sighs> About their comments that you keep deleting, delete, delete, delete. <laughs> Matt Hardy reference. I invite you to please not delete the comments that people are leaving in your page because it just. It's not like a good look in reality. Just one of the things that I like about the Wellness Observer Live, it's pro wellness for everybody. And the comments there, as long as the comments are not like bullying somebody or calling somebody names and are respectful, you know, you should leave them because people have opinions. People like you, people don't like you. It is what it is. You don't have to reply to all of them. But there were some weird messages there. There were some weird messages. Like some of them said, yes, my Lord, or feel desire. Like it had nothing to do with what you're saying. Nothing. Kenny K.O., Goob, and of course, Nick Trigilli have all done videos on you. And you never wasted energy on any of those outlets that are far more bigger than Johnny Styles and the Wellness Observer Life. I wonder why. I wonder why you targeted me. And they came out and bluntly showed the world how Photoshop the pictures were, and they exposed you. And you didn't do a post like that, but yet you did it for me. Very interesting. In case you didn't see it, Jarishna went to Nick's um, video and she commented. I'm going to put it on screen right here. She says that for many years, Johnny was a close friend to me and my husband. And after this past Olympia, Johnny turned negative on me. He started spreading rumors, even said horrible things about me to my own mother and made her cry. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? I'm going to say it one more time. Are you sure about that? Listen, the Olympia was in September of 2021. And the Olympia, you placed fourth. You were clearly not happy because Friday you didn't show up in the best condition. And then, you know, Saturday you came in a little bit better, but you were not happy. You decided to go dark on the world after the Olympia. Maybe you were upset. Maybe you're not happy. But you're telling the world that I was negative towards you after the Olympia? I did my review on you. And you know what happened? You and I kept talking September, October, November, December, January, March, April. We kept talking after the Olympia. You were talking to me like normal, nothing. So if I was negative towards you after the Olympia, why did you keep talking to me? As a matter of fact, the last ever text that I sent you 
I sent it because I had girls asking about posing. Where would these girls get in cut contact with you? Where? Because I didn't know. I was asking you directly. That's business for you. I was getting you business, basically. I never got a response. I never got a response. I made your mother cry. Are you sure about that? I know your mom is very Christian. I know your mom is a great person. The last time I saw your family, Yorishna, was when you wore New York Pro here in Florida two years ago. That was the last time I saw your family. I haven't talked to your mother in person ever. You know, I talked to her before, like before all this, but like not now. Personally, maybe she got upset about the video I did about your your contract signing in Pittsburgh. Maybe she got upset about that. Maybe she got upset about the video I did of your guest posting. Maybe she did get upset. But that's all public knowledge. That's all public video. You know, if you had a problem with that, you should have called me, texted me. Hey, my mom is upset. Please don't do that. Well, whatever. We could have talked. But I have never talked to your mom. I sat back for a long time quietly ignoring these attacks. But enough is enough. Okay, enough is enough. I would like to know which attacks are you talking about. Please tell me what attacks am I am I doing to you? What have I attacked you? People in this industry know what I've said of everybody because I put it publicly out there for people to get better. So if I said something that hurt your mom and made her cry, like you say in this post, to your mom, I apologize. I apologize. I'm very sorry. Fortunately, this is how things work. At the end of the day, you can go back to my post and you can read the receipts that I have over there. Like, you know, who gave her the Olympia award, who took her to RX Muscle, who did her first Beth Francis Powerhouse gym video, who gave her her, you know, who helped her get her first tanning sponsorship with Liquid Sun Race, which that didn't work out because she decided to go with another person while you know there was a contract involved all this stuff that i helped this person you know what <clears throat> it's fine i wish you the very best i believe that the, the the post is if it's at the moment of this recording is still up i believed in my heart that if you were my friend after many, many years of up and down, we've been together all over the world, Mexico, Puerto Rico, New York. We even went to Italy for a show. Remember that? Jessica Reyes Padilla was there with us. She can remember. The video with Kai Green, Jessica was there. She can remember. If you were my friend and you had an issue with me, any sort of issue, you should have called me. You have my number. You should have texted me. I know you're on tour with Carol G and doing this, that, and the other. You were in Colombia for a little bit. You should have called me. You should have handled the situation with me. If you had something to say to me, say to me. But no, you decided to go on publicly and try to cancel this outlet. And for that, that's not cool. That's not cool. But you know what? I wish you the best. I wish you the very best moving forward in what's left of your IFBB Pro Wellness career. At the moment, you shouldn't be focusing on me. You should be focusing on yourself. You should be focusing on your prep for the Olympia, the biggest show of your life. The show where you place fourth, and I gave you the award. I gave you that award, and I was so happy for you and so happy for me because two kids, from Puerto Rico, made it to the Olympia stage, and they shared that moment. But you know what? I wish you the best. And more importantly, more importantly than wishing you the best, I have three words for you. Prove me wrong. And last but not least, I have to cover this as well because it was brought on to my attention that a certain IFBB pro, which I've never even heard of, went on a live Instagram and tried to do a video saying from his mouth that I'm a racist. 
Really? Really? <laughs> Have you looked at me? Do you know where I come from? I come from Puerto Rico, the real island. Not from New York, not a New Yorkian, from the real island. Have you looked at your race now? She's kind of like same, my same color. If you don't know, Puerto Ricans are a mixture of three races. White, Indian, and black. White come from Spain, the conquistadors, like Christopher Columbus, that type of person. And the Indians, which is Indios Tainos of Puerto Rico, which is what you call like the native uh, Indians in our island. And three, the black race from Africa, the slaves. All you, all you mix all those three together and you get a Puerto Rican. How can you sit here and say that I'm racist? Why? Because I don't cover enough African-American girls on my wellness page? Are you serious? Are you serious? Listen, listen, dude. I know what it feels to get, you know, looks from people, okay? My father is like, used to look like Mel Gibson, rest in peace, you know, my father. My mom, I'm a clone of my mom, literally. I know how it feels to be looked at a certain way because of your skin tone, number one. Number two, where were you in 2013, 2014, when we were all talking about Latoria Watts and pushing her to greatness, when in figure we had Nicole Wilkins, Candace Keen, all these white girls winning the shows, and we were pushing Latoria because she was phenomenal, Okay. I remember talking to Latoria in the Tampa Pro, and um, I remember her telling me, hey, Johnny, you know, I talked to a judge, and um, he said, <laughs> the judge said that, you know, I don't have nobody to compare you because you're so different. So I'm like, you should have won the show right there and then. I don't understand where this is coming from, but I think I know. Every athlete that has gone through the NPC and IFBB Pro League knows what it takes to be the best they know that genetics plays a humongous role. And we've had the best bodybuilders in the world, men being, you know, African-American. We have had them all classes, including figure, which it's amazing the way the, the, these girls look on stage, okay? Fortunately, for our wellness class, it's basically genetics don't basically favor the African-American girls at the moment. The African-American girls have to work hard to get this look that we've been creating for thousands of years, okay? Am I saying that, you know, there's not enough, you know, African-American girls that could do battle in, in, in the wellness class for the moment? There are some, Judy and Winston being one, Quadzilla being another one, you know? There, there's girls right there that are amazing, okay? Um, In reality, I don't understand where this is coming from. Um, could we have a, a, a black wellness Olympia? Absolutely. Five years from now, you never know who's going to come out of the woodwork. Maybe. Maybe that girl running track right now at the Olympics. Maybe maybe she will be the, the top Olympian, the first ever African-American wellness. But in reality, at the moment, you know, I don't understand where this is coming from. I am not racist at all. And I cover, if you go down to my, if you only went through my videos, you could say that I talk about everybody, white, Latin, black, blue, whatever. I talk about everybody. I critique everybody. So don't ever, ever think that I'm racist because I'm not, not at all. I am happy right now that, you know, people are starting to, come on board about this whole situation. Because for the longest time, people thought that, you know, there was no black girls that I could feature. Daisha Johnson being one, boom, out of nowhere. I feature her many times. People get, people get it, you know? Same thing with the whole Yarisha situation. Hey, for months when I started the page, people thought that she was my favorite. People thought that I was plugging her every now and then, trying to fit her in, fit her in. And you know what? If you go back to my Arnold Classic review, you will see where I completely 
turn that down. And I told the world, just because she's my friend doesn't mean that I'm not going to critique her. Absolutely not. Once you're there, you're a competitor like everybody else. Once you're down, you're still my friend. It's fine. You go back and you train harder, whatever. But no, I had to come on screen and tell each and every single one of you, no, Yarishna is not my favorite. No, she is not, I'm not plugging her. She's another competitor just like anybody else. So if it comes to that with the whole African-American sister situation, I'm sure I have a friend, Paul Bennett, that he loves African-American competitors. He, he follows me. He knows me from RX Muscle seven years ago. He always asks me. He always sends me pictures of girls that look amazing. And I'm like, Paul, this girl looks awesome. Give her, her, give her one year. This girl looks great. Give her two months. You know, he's always looking for rising up and comers to show me. And I applaud him for me. I love him for that because he believes that one day we're going to have a breakout superstar, okay, from an African-American. But there's people like that. There's people I love that. And, hey, more power to you. I like that. At the moment, Daisha Johnson, Quadzilla, and Judy and Winston look insane, okay? Judy and Winston, for example, deserves to be in the Olympia. Absolutely, hands down. So that is the show, probably the longest show I've done <laughs> in the Wellness Observer Live. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for every single one of you that have commented on my post. Listen, I had no idea. I Yeah, you know, 20, 25 people, over 400 of you commented publicly. You know, the DMs have been insane. Some of you have gone to her page and gotten deleted. Delete. I'm sorry about that. You won't get deleted in my page. Go on, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you very, very soon. Let me know. Does the catalyst sound good? Or, or the godfather of wellness? Did I tell you guys in this video what happened? Really? You know, I don't like making long videos, but I guess the situation had to come down to this. Thank you so guys. Thank you so much, guys. This is great. This is great. I love it. Thank you so much. Again, I appreciate each and every single one of you. I love you all. And this is all for the love of the game we called wellness. Let's do this.